I'm Greg, I'm your MC for today's presentation. Now, we have some exciting new plans to share with you, and we'll have time for questions at the end. Now, let's begin. First, here's President and COO of Universal Orlando Resort, Bill Davis. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're off to a good start today. What an incredible few years it's been here at Universal Orlando. The growth across our destination has been and continues to be absolutely extraordinary. From the addition of Transformers, Springfield, and so much more, we've sought to bring our guests more amazing jaw-dropping attractions and experiences than ever before. And there's a lot more on the way. Today, we will share news about what's happening across our entire destination, and you will get a glimpse of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley at Universal Studios, as well as the Hogwarts Express. Our guests have been thrilled by the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Islands of Adventure since it opened in 2010. And now we're bringing even more of Harry's adventures to life. Universal Orlando Resort has been and will continue to be truly the home of Harry Potter. You will also get a glimpse of our brand new resort, the fantastic new Cabana Bay Beach Resort. But today is really about Universal City Walk and the amazing growth we have planned in this area over the next 12 months. We've invested a lot of time, resources, and talent across our entire destination, and now we'll be doing all of that at what we consider to be our front door, Universal City Walk. To take you through all these new offerings that you'll be seeing today, let me introduce, here's Mark Woodbury, the president of Universal Creative. Mark. Every year is a banner year at... I want to play this at the one more time because I like it so much. Come on. Every year is a great year at Universal. Orlando and 2014 will be nothing short of a spectacular year. Bill mentioned what we're talking about. We've got an entire new land of Harry Potter, a great new hotel to talk to you about, and then a whole bunch of great stuff happening in CityWalk. So let me start off by talking a little bit about what's coming in Harry Potter. In 2010, you remember we opened the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Islands of Adventure and it instantly became a global phenomenon. Partly because of the attention to detail, the authenticity, the storytelling, and the incredible innovative technology that we brought to bear to bring the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey to life in a way that nobody could possibly imagine. Well, we also knew at that time that there were other great stories to tell. In particular, we knew that everybody wanted to go to Diagon Alley. Now, if you know something about Diagon Alley, you know Diagon Alley is hidden behind London, in real-time London. So conventional wisdom would have had you think, why don't we just put the expansion next to the existing Wizarding World at Islands of Adventure? We've got a better idea. Universal Studios Florida is all about these big scale sets, so why not build London at Universal Studios Florida and hide Diagon Alley behind it? That's exactly what we're going to do. And Diagon Alley is going to be the same level of detail, the same level of immersion, and have one of the greatest attractions in the world in the form of the Gringotts attraction. You're, you're not going to believe it when you see it, but there's more. The magic of this whole thing is the people are going to be able to get into Diagon Alley and take the Hogwarts Express from Universal Studios Florida, Diagon Alley, across the resort to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsgeade at Islands of Adventure in an unbelievable two-park, one seamless experience that is unlike anything in the world. Recently I had the opportunity to sit down with my good friend Stuart Craig, who is the Academy Award nominated producer and uh, 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 production designer for all eight Harry Potter films, and Dale Mason, our creative director, and we had a nice chat about what's coming, so we've got to share a little bit of that tape with you. Hello, I'm Mark Woodbury, president of Universal Creative, and with me, Stuart Craig, production designer for all eight of the Harry Potter films, and Dale Mason, vice president of Universal Creative and executive art director for The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Today we're going to share some exciting new details about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley, which will open next summer at Universal Studios Florida. The new area will be next door to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade, which is at Universal's Islands of Adventure. Now, you're going to be among the first to hear some of our plans. 
So the Hogwarts Express is such an iconic part of the fiction. Tell the fans more about that journey. The journey from King's Cross to Hogsmeade is where Harry met Ron and Hermione. You are going to step onto the platform. There will be that amazing gleaming train. You can board it and take the journey to Hogsmeade. And then the other way around, going from Hogsmeade, taking the Hogwarts Express into London. When you get off in London, the first thing you'll be able to do is walk through that incredible London set. And the level of detail, although the same depth of detail at Hogsmeade, is totally different between sort of a rural mountain village and an urban city. Yes, they're very different. I mean, the philosophy all the way through was that detail just gave everything such credibility. So if everything seems to be completely real, and then magic grows out of that. Now, let me tell you about my next piece of news. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter diagonally needed a special place where families can relax and have a great, authentic meal. So we're going to tell you a little bit about the Leaky Cauldron and bringing that to life. It's another great opportunity to walk from one space into another to experience the whole thing. In a movie, you only see what the camera allows you to see. But here, we were able to put detail into the ceiling, encouraging people to look up. It is like walking right into that scene from The Prison of Azkaban. It's something that I guess you're just going to be blown away by. You know, it's a 360 experience. We're building it so much bigger than I think anybody could imagine. There are more alleys, more shops. It's big, it's huge. So, there you go. And we are creating the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley because there are so many more stories to tell and adventures to share. We can't wait to tell you more about what we're doing. Next year is going to be very special. Be sure to watch for more news and updates starting early in the year. Thanks a lot. So, that's a little bit about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And more to come. Stay tuned. Details are going to continue to evolve, and we'll bring those to you as soon as they do. So, that's a little bit about Harry Potter. Now, let me tell you about the Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Alice Norsworthy is the head of our marketing department. She does a tremendous amount of work of understanding what our guests like. And she tells us they love our resorts, they love the Portofino, they love the Hard Rock, they love the Royal Pacific, but they want more. They want more immersion, they want more experience, and they want more options for their family in terms of price point and room size. So that's exactly what we're going to do with the Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Like all our resorts, we take you to an exotic place or an exotic time. And in this case, it's an exotic place and time. When you pull up to the Cabana Bay Beach Resort, it's going to be like driving right into 1960. The architecture of the place speaks right to the period. Every detail about it is really terrific. And you'll, you'll go into the lobby. It's a vast, colorful lobby, terrazzo floors, a terrific beach mosaic inspired from the 60s artwork. And it's it just an amazing view out onto the amenity package. When you look to the other side of the lobby, you'll see the, uh, the Swizzle Lounge where mom and dad can sit and have a drink after a long day in the park. In the center is a wonderful uh, sky-lit palm atrium that's inspired by one of the great Lowe's hotels of, of uh, Palm Beach. No hotel like this would be complete without its own galaxy bowling alley, a 10-lane bowling alley right in the middle of the hotel. Really spectacular. It has a giant restaurant that has four different mini restaurants within it for something for the entire family, a different kind of food service for everybody in the family, catering to every taste, a hideaway lounge, and the rooms themselves are really spectacular. We have 900 suites. These are great rooms. When they, when they told us that they wanted a different room, a bigger room for a bigger family, this room will sleep six people as a compartment for sleeping, as a living room, as a little kitchenette. It's really wonderful. So there are 900 of these and 900 value rooms to make up a complement of 1,800 rooms total. And two really spectacular amenity package. On the north side courtyard has its own swimming pool, water slide, giant fountains, pop jet area for the kids. And on the south side, it's got its own pool amenity with, with the resort's first lazy river. So Cabana Bay is really something to behold, a, a concept that fits right into our portfolio. Great experience, great architecture, smack dab onto the authenticity profile, and a really wonderful family experience across the board. So that's a little bit about Harry Potter and a little bit about Cabana Bay. And now let me talk to you a little bit about CityWalk. And to do that, let me bring up Rick Farrell. Executive Vice President of Revenue Operations for CityWalk. 
talk a little bit about CityWalk. Since February of 1999, CityWalk has served as the arrival portal and the very first impression for all of our guests here at Universal Orlando Resort. It's presented the best of entertainment, food, and merchandise for our guests and visitors from around the world. And CityWalk's continued to grow with the rest of the, uh, with the, rest of the destination. It already includes the hottest most recognizable entertainment and dining and merchandise locations. Blue Man Group, Hard Rock Live, Hard Rock Cafe, Emeralds Orlando, NASCAR Cafe, AMC Theaters with IMAX, Bubba Gum Shrimp Company, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, excuse me, I have to take a breath, <laughs> Martin Huntington to Tattoo Company, Pat O'Brien's, Bob Marley, A Tribute to Freedom. But instead of me continuing to list this, I want to also talk about uh, of what we've had uh, been an ongoing uh, improvement, ongoing new offerings. The brand new show at Blue Man Group. We've added Hollywood Drive-In Golf, Rising Star Karaoke, and our New Year's Eve celebrations. But instead of me continuing to to list those, Mark, I think we have something we'd like to share with you. Only if my finger works this time. <laughs> of City Walk, and in the words of our, our great friend and our partner and our uh, City Walk family member, Emeril Lagasse, we're going to kick it up a notch, and 2014 is the time for a historic level of expansion. We've developed and are uh, presenting today eight new venues that represent a remarkable selection of the new, the unique, the enticing, and the craveable. And that's quite an undertaking to roll out all of this excitement throughout the first half of the year to be ready by June. And I'd like to turn it back over to Mark Woodbury so he can go into the detail of exactly why we are so excited. Mark. Thanks, Rick. Let's do exactly that. To help me do so, I'd like to bring up a good friend of mine, Modesto Akawa, and he'll help talk through these concepts. But before he does, come on, Modesto. <laughs> is Vice President of Revenue Operations for CityWalk, which to me is a long way of saying this dude knows everything there is to know about food. He knows the restaurant business soup to nuts, and together we've been working on these concepts that we're going to show you in a second. The basic idea was simple. Hard to execute, but simple. Create the best in category of everything you can imagine, whether it's what you want to have, if it's a dining experience, your entertainment experience, your cinema experience, or your shopping experience. So let's, let's take a look. First, a little bit about shopping. You know, Karen Irwin leads our merchandise development group, and she has developed an assortment of product around our character families, which represents some of the best in the business. Marvel, Seuss, Transformers, Despicable Me, and of course, Harry Potter. So in order to give those places a suitable home, we're going to totally renovate the CityWalk uh, retail store and create a completely new venue right in the heart of CityWalk that is an interactive retail experience that would be like none other and house the family of properties that we have that are also like none other. We'll go here to Vesta, switch places with you for a sec. And let's bring these back up and talk a little bit about the new startups. Perfect. So, first of all, we start out with a world class design. And then we take Starbucks from the second floor, we move it down to the entrance of our city. So we're moving it down, doubling the size, 
over 130 seats for your enjoyment. And this will be located right next to our next concept that we're going to be talking about, which is Cold Stone. You know, Starbucks people are really great at brand definition. I mean, they, they, they do just a trip job. They're re-imaging Starbucks for this location. 2,400 square feet, great seating up, you know, area outside. It sits right underneath the canopy as you walk into City Walk. Some covered seating for Starbucks. And if you're anything like me, you got to start the morning with a Starbucks. It's right on your way into the park. And that's exactly what you'll be able to do at the new uh, Starbucks. So, from Starbucks to ice cream. Oh. When you're on vacation, I think you ought to indulge. Now, Cold Stone does that for you. So we start out with making your favorite ice cream from scratch in front of you. We have this located right again in the entrance of our city, right next door to Starbucks. If you're like me, you like to mix your own ice cream. You like to do it at a really cool place. And that's what's going to happen here. It sits right next to Starbucks, right on a really great corner, just under the bridge as you come in and out of, uh, of City Walk and a great place. And if you don't like ice cream, then surely you must like frozen yogurt. And if you don't like either one of those, I'm not exactly sure what's the matter with you, but <laughs> you, should, you should have that looked at. Well, this is a fun twist on dessert, and no pun intended. We're talking about quality ingredients here. We're talking about uh, certified kosher, gluten-free, it's vegan. This uh, Minchies will be located in our Lombard Street, which Mark is doing a terrific renovation on. Lombard Street, as you know, goes from the lower part of the walk up to the upstairs uh, exit of the cinema. It's going to be totally reimagined, lit at night, re-landscaped, and new venues along the way, with Menchie's being one of them. Great little patios outside, grab a yogurt with the family, sit down, go to see a movie, grab a yogurt, sit down. It happens to be right next door to the uh, bread box, which we'll go to next. Brand new concept. I'm going to talk about the, the concepts. When we imagine these concepts, there are three really simple things that we focused on. Right. And, and the name says it all. Handcrafted sandwiches, bread box. This is your corner deli, Mark. I mean, this is where you go and you get your traditional sandwich, or you get that gooey new craft sandwich. It's, it's the very size of our business. Secondly, fresh bread all day long. We're going to be making fresh bread, not just one, but multiple types of bread. So when you come in here, you're going to really reminisce of the, the, your favorite sandwich shop that you grew up with. Located right next door to the cinema. In fact, as you exit the cinema, there's a window inside the cinema looking into the bread box. So you can't miss the opportunity or the enticement to go have a sandwich at the bread box. Really fantastic. And that takes us on to our new Italian concept. You know, we have a really great Italian restaurant here right now, Pasta Mori. But as we do with everything, we look for an opportunity to make it better. And we think we have exactly that. Franzo is a working title name for our new Italian kitchen. We're going to take our Italian experience and kick it up several notches to something entirely new. When you go into this place, you'll have a vista right into the kitchen where you'll see them making fresh pasta every day to order. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right, Mark. We want to show off our kitchen. You know, our, our theme here in City Walk, really, uh, we're talking about three things. We're talking about fresh ingredients, we're talking about made for you, and we're talking about made in front of you. So, when you talk about our Italian kitchen, you'll see us making fresh pasta, simmering sauces, uh, flatbreads. Not only do we have a private dining room to the side, but all aspects of the restaurant, you're going to be able to see us doing the art of cooking. Great location, right in the center of a city walk, totally reimagined exterior. These, these next few venues we're going to talk about really represent the heart of city walk. All three of them happen right in the middle of city walk, and our Italian kitchen is going to be is going to be one of the major features for that, and a great experience uh, in, in the Italian genre. And speaking of Italian genre, if you have not yet had a red oven pizza, well, then you probably have not yet had pizza. You probably didn't know that, but you have not had pizza yet. So. Be prepared. Yeah. Well, we set out to make what we thought was going to be the best pizza. So, um, this artisan made pizza, the old world tradition of ingredients, is something you commonly see in a full service restaurant and a more uh, upper end uh, restaurant. So, we decided to just take those ingredients, put them in a fast casual environment. So, we start with double zero flour, the filtered water, some marshmallow tomatoes, buffalo mozzarella, our oven which is, you'll see later on today, can get up to 1,400 degrees. We decided to keep it around 900, which would, is what makes our crust perfect. I told you you need a lot of food. 
There's an oven he's talking about. You'll see it a little bit later. Great little location. You walk up, you order your food, you see it, you order your pizza, you see it made right in front of you. It goes in the oven, you watch it cook, you go have a seat, they bring it right to your table. It's really terrific uh, pizza. And that brings us over to Atejitos, which will bring the streets of Mexico City to life right here in City Walk. It's festive, it's colorful, it's vibrant, and the environment matches the food. Yeah. And, and once again, we're talking about fresh sauces, fresh tortillas, um, skite, table side guacamole, tamales. The, this is the, really the heart and soul of food of the folks in Mexico. We, we have an amazing restaurant, so when you go out today and you look to your right, you see that towering building. It has two kitchens, two floors, and two menus. All of the kitchens, you can sit around the kitchen and watch us prepare all the food from scratch. You'll see it when you go out. It is, a, it is a, an amazing structure. The interior is amazing as well. The fixtures, the furnishings, the space itself, the environment, the wardrobe, the presentation of the food, everything is just full of life and full of flavor. This is really a spectacular version and fits right into what we're talking about. We're going for best in category. This will be best in category when it, does, when it comes to Mexico. So, you can't have a great place without a great hot dog. We searched the world over for what is a great hot, hot dog. We came across Steve Schuster, who had an idea for the Hot Dog Hall of Fame to bring to life all the great hot dogs. And here is Steve Borman to tell you a little bit more about the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Thank you, Mark. I can't tell you how excited we are to open Hot Dog Hall of Fame at Universal uh, City Block. Hot Dog Hall of Fame is a true slice of Americana. It's mom, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, baseball, and of course, hot dogs. And we Americans love our hot dogs. In a typical year between Memorial Day and Labor Day, Americans consume 7 billion hot dogs. Uh, if you strung together every hot dog eaten at a major league ballpark, uh, it would stretch from Yankee Stadium to Candlestick Park. And Hot Dog Hall of Fame, quite frankly, is a collection of the best hot dogs, sausages, and french fries in the world. Our menu features iconic and classic dogs from all the great bar parts around the country. You can get a Dodger dog from LA, you can get a Dixie dog from Atlanta, you can get a barbecue dog from KC, a good old fashioned beer brought from Milwaukee, a dirty water dog from New York, or my personal favorite, the Chicago dog. At Hot Dog Hall of Fame, every dog has its day, which means we'll make your hot dog your way with one exception. We will never, never ever, put ketchup on a hot dog. <laughs> you have to do that your own. But if you want to kick up your experience a notch, you can slide into our gourmet mustard bar. Uh, we have the best mustards from around the world, certified and curated for us from the National Mustard Museum in Mount Core of Wisconsin. Uh, so we have documentation of that. So please come join us, step up to the plate, work your way around the bases, Slide into the box seats and check out what's going on in the Jumbotron. Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Back to the best hot dogs, sausages, and french fries in the world. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> hot Dog Hall of Fame is located right across the street from Atahitos. And when he talks about going into the ballpark, this little venue is full of all kinds of iconography from ballparks, including seats from uh, specific ballparks around the country that will be places where you can sit and have a hot dog, a jumbotron, the place for sports on, and a great place for a hot dog. This, you know, you sometimes search the world for a great concept, and sometimes you come upon a great concept. A couple years ago, I was in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, waiting for a flight with my wife. I said to her, I really like some sushi. She said, I really like a hamburger. And so we Googled sushi and hamburger and came up with catfish. So we go in there, we have dinner, we have the most spectacular dinner you could imagine in the most wild place we've ever seen. I call the manager over and Alan shows up and he says, I say to him, what do you think about doing this in Orlando? Well here's Alan and Marcus from the Cowfish to tell you about it. Thank you for that visit. Thank God you walked in for us. <laughs> And so was the tale of the cow and the fish from two separate places they had but one wish to bring to the world in a way so delicious an unusual place to enjoy a great dish. I'm Marcus Hall. And I'm Alan Springate, and we are the co-founders of the Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar. Ten years ago, we set out to open up a pan-Asian restaurant in the small town of Huntersville, North Carolina. 
after five years of growth, we found what we hoped was going to be our second location for that concept in South Park Mall in Charlotte, North Carolina. Unfortunately, as we were drawing plans, there was not room in that space for a sushi bar, alcohol bar, and room for tables and chairs and guests. Uh, and thank God, this goofball over here was running a gourmet burger joint right on the other side of the wall. So one night on the phone, as we were saying, this space won't work for our concept, a very, very faithful message and faithful phone call it was. I asked about what about bringing down the wall. Let's bring burgers and sushi together, harmony and both. And we started talking about building a sushi burger bar. He started talking about it. I said, that is the stupidest idea. <laughs> We're going to get laughed out of town, no doubt. But we did it anyway. So there you go. So today, the Cowfish boasts big old honking gourmet burger menu, fresh, innovative sushi menu, all done, all natural, all the time, 100% hormone and antibiotic free. And to top it off, in between the two, is it sushi? Is it burger? No, it's burgushi. A true fusion of sushi burger. More to come on that. He does this all the time. It's the international sign of burgushi. We had, we had the menu, and now the idea was how do you build a restaurant? How, what is a sushi burger bar? And this is where we got to have a lot of fun. This is where we got to put some creativity in, bring the land and the sea, the cow and the fish, east meets west, vanilla ice meets Johnny Cash. <laughs> and bring it all together and give it its own heart, its own soul, and its own environment. We wanted a place where come one, come all. They said it couldn't be done. A place where you can come out with your kids, with your family, go wild. Later on in the evening, you can be all decked out, ready to go out on the town. And that's what we've attempted to achieve with the vibe of the place. We put a lot of focus on kind of cheeky pop art. And we also put a big piece of it's uh, technology. All our sushi bars have interactive touch screens. We're able to kind of browse the daily news, play a game with the date, or you can even construct a fish that, virtual fish that drops in the virtual fish tank behind the sushi bar and watch it swim while you're eating. So today we operate two units, one in Charlotte, North Carolina, one in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they're going to let us out of old North Kakalaki to come swim with y'all here. And we are, we are blessed with this opportunity. I think it's going to be an amazing day for our small business. Thanks for having us. Calpers are going to be located right in the center of City Walk. You went to this lower level entrance. This is a vast. Uh, atrium space, circulated up the stairway, and then boom, you're into this environment that they were talking about. Pop art, East meets West. This might be the first time you ever heard Bogushi, but it will not be the last. Just remember that. That's where it's all going. So, we've talked a lot about uh, these venues today. Everything we've imagined about taking CityWalk up to the next level is, is in progress and happening, and this is the first phase of an evolution that is going to keep CityWalk on the front edge of the best in class of everything you can imagine. So, that's a little bit about that. We told you about the Missing World of Harry Potter, we told you about the Banda Bay Beach Resort, and we told you about what's happening at CityWalk 2014. It's a year to be right here at Universal Orlando. Thank you very much. I know you have some questions for these gentlemen, so Modesto and Rick, hop back up on stage for questions, and let's begin the Q&A portion of our presentation. We have our first question. Uh, here we go. I believe that Ricky had a question. There's a lot going on around uh, Universal Orlando right now, certainly with attractions and everything. Why do you th think now is a great time to expand and improve upon CityWalk? Well, we have, a, we have a, as you said, we have a lot going on. We have the expansion of Harry Potter. We have a new hotel going on. We have a continual great business. And it, it's our desire to keep this thing, keep it invested in category. So in order to do that, you've got to keep changing. You've got to keep evolving. And that's exactly what you're hearing today. Okay, great. Next question. Just raise your hand if you have a question. All right, can stop over here. Hi, Lauren Johnson, Fox 35. With so much happening and so many changes coming with the facelift and redoing everything, what does it mean for the current guests that are coming to the park every day? Well, what it means is we're going to kick it up a notch. We've well, got all this great stuff that I listed out for you that already today has made us the top entertainment destination. We are the, we are the entertainment capital of Orlando. All of these things are now kicking it up another notch. That's what it's going to mean to the guests that they can continue to come back and enjoy what they've enjoyed. Now they're going to get this next level. Great. The next 
next question. Uh, what existing properties are going to have to make way for some of these new properties coming in? Well, uh, let's see. If you take uh, Antahitos, it's replaced in the Latin Quarter. I mentioned that Pasta Mori will be replaced by a new Italian kitchen. Uh, we're taking Starbucks, moving it downstairs in order to make room for cowfish upstairs. Uh, Cold, uh, Cold Stone is going downstairs along with Starbucks. So things are shifting around in order to make all this happen. But we're, you know, we're really optimizing the experience by putting places where they absolutely want to be in order to make it the best it can possibly be. Okay, great. We have a question right over here. How will ticketing and park entrance and exit work between uh, Wizarding World and Diagon Alley? You have these two great parks, right? Now you have an opportunity to go from one park to the other in a one story experience. If you go to Universal Studios Florida, you can get on at Diagon Alley, you can get on the Hogwarts Express and take it over to Islands of Adventure, the Wizarding World of Hogsmeade. Unbelievable opportunity. Most people that come to the resort now experience both parks. This would be a great way for them to do that. And if you come to the park and want to go to one park, you can have a Harry Potter experience either way. And we'll release more details about the Wizarding World as we get closer. No question? Janae Brim, Channel 9. When we're talking about adding all these things and things will be shut down or whatever the case may be, are, is this going to happen in phases? I mean, will all of these things that might be replaced, will they all be shut down at once? And how do you all plan to do that so that, as you were mentioning, guests can still have a, a pleasurable experience on what's happening? Have you ever played three-dimensional chess? <laughs> that, that, that's what this is. I mean, we're, we are currently moving things around, and you try to do it as invisibly as possible. Uh, we, we closed down the pizza place and reopened it. It was virtually invisible. Latin Quarter now is gone, and Antihitos is just about finished. So things are happening piece by piece. But by mid-summer, everything will be blossoming, all the things we've talked about. And uh, you, know, you try to do that as cleanly as possible with the least amount of impact. To, to change one thing up to the next. Great. Uh, just one more question about the Hogwarts Express. Will, you, will it require a multi-park ticket in order to experience that attraction? Yeah. You know, a lot more information is going to come out about the, the Wizarding World of uh, Harry Potter at Diagon Alley, as well as Hogsmeade, and how those, all those things work together. But today, we really want to focus on uh, Siegel. Right, next question. Straight to hand if you have a question. six other kids, no seatbelts and all that kind of stuff. And you had families headed out for this carefree search of the great American summer vacation. And we just felt that that was really a, a kind of idealistic uh, moment in time. And the architecture for it represented a really cool kind of booty uh, vibe. So the whole thing just, just worked together. When you pull up to the place, you see cars from the 1960s, the furniture is all from the 1950s and 60s. The whole vibe you know, celebrates that uh, mid-century modern experience. Hi, Julia Leorellana from Univision Orlando. Two questions. Do you have I'm right here? <laughs> Do you have an estimate budget for this expansion and would this affect uh, uh, the prices of the tickets? The the budget for the expansion, I, I, I usually answer that question the same way. We spend what we have to do to get them exactly right, whether it's in the parks or in Seawalk or in the hotels. 
And, and that's just what we do. You know, we're very focused on delivering the highest level of experience we possibly can in the best places we can possibly imagine and, and giving people memories that last in a lifetime by virtue of uh, a really compelling family experience. Uh, you said this was the uh, first phase. Um, what's going to happen after, after midsummer? Well, you'll be hearing more and more about what's happening at CityWalk as time goes on, but it, it is a constant evolution. That's the only way that you can continue to stay on top of your game, and you'll continue to see that. You see it in our parks, you see it in our resorts, and you'll continue to see it over time at CityWalk. So this is a process for us. We continue to look at how do we make this the best of the best uh, for not just the people visiting the resort, but Central Florida as well. More questions? Do we have any other questions? Can you guys tell us a little bit about the vision? Like why why these new concepts are coming to City Walk? Like why cowfish? Why Hawk Hall of Fame? I'll start. Go ahead. I'll start. Yeah, I, I just think City Walk is such a great place, and I call it where the locals and the imports unite. Right? So you have guests from outside of the world, you get guests from out of US, I mean US, and you have the locals. And I, I think the concepts of the food and the, the things we're doing really represent, in totality, craveable moments for our guests, whether it's that, that pizza with the, the fine ingredients all the way to the cowfish, all the way to uh, your um, ice cream made to order for you. I think we're trying to really represent all the tastes, all the desires that our guests would like from us. And I think in totality right now, it balances very well. Hi again. Um, uh, there's a, another shopping and dining complex called Downtown Disney in the city, obviously transforming into Disney Springs soon. Is this in response to Disney's move there? No, they, really this isn't a response to what we're doing. I mean, the, you know, we don't really spend too much time thinking about all those things. We think about how do we deliver an experience that is unlike anything else? How do we deliver the universal brand, which has become so globally popular, on an ongoing basis in every form that we have to offer it? in our parks, in our city walk, in our resorts. So we'll continue to do this. This is all about what makes the Universal Brand experience what it is and, and, and why it is as popular as it is. You know, on all these developments, you have to have a long view, and um, you know we're, we're able to continue to bring an experience that uh, we, we know people want. We know people want to escape their daily lives, and, and this is the kind of escape that we give them. Uh, great parks, great resorts, great city walk experiences, and you know that's an opportunity for families to get together and treasure that moment, that time that uh, that was really special. And, and bring it here and uh, create the memories that last in a lifetime. We think that, that uh, in the end, is what people are really looking for. Okay, great. We have time for one more question. Uh, in our 3D chess game, what's going to be the last movement? When, when, when will we know that we're done? And will that miraculously be around the time that Diagon added? <laughs> well, I don't, I'll let you guess the answer, but we're never done. We're never done. That, that, that's an important concept, but we're really never done here. We're continuing to go, but I guess you might want to touch on that. I, I, think, I think Mark said it correctly. City Walk, and, and Rick opened up since, since 1999, all the things we've done at City Walk. Uh, I just don't know that we're done at a certain point. I think we're going to continue to evolve, our guests continue to evolve. We have a rich history of evolving in this company. So I think City Walk is always going to continue to do that, whether you're a rising star today or uh, at Bronzo. And Italian kitchen tomorrow. I, I can tell you we're, we're already thinking about concepts we haven't yet told you about that will be in City Walk, in the parks, and in the resort. So things will continue to happen. All right, and that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you to Mark Modesto, Jeff Marcus, and Alan.